Yes, ma'am. When they turned the body over, so the body was lying on its stomach, what did they see? Was there a hole in the back of the head? Was the back of the shirt bloody? I was there a, blood? I am, well, the back of the shirt was bloody. I am not aware of any, well, I don't know. I don't want to make a blanket statement. Officially, what was there, well, actually, I didn't show you this. John Rolla said at the back of the skull, he said, interesting enough, he said, I th at first, I thought the bullet was still in the head. Strange comment. The back of the head apparently was mushy. There was no blowout, according to Rolla, the, invest the investigator who was there when the body was rolled. Uh, Hout said that there was a small volume of blood on the back of the head and that it was dried. So one possibility, okay, say you take a 22 or a 25 entrance wound here, it's heading up, it goes through the tongue, and it's headed up this way, but doesn't have enough juice or speed to blow out. The hydroshock might, you know, crack or do something to the head up here. You could have some bleeding up here. You're getting into, into just, the data just, I don't think, really lets you have an opinion. But I noticed in the typewritten reports that it claimed that there was a large pool of blood under the back, and that's why the shirt was bloody? Yeah, the Fisk the report says, downhill. the Fisk report says there was a large pool of, meaning liquid, presumably, blood on the ground underneath the head. It, it cites Dr. Hout. You go to Dr. Hout's FBI interview, and rather than being large, he says small. Rather than pool, he says dried. Rather than on the ground, he says matted and clotted on the back of the head. So this was just Fisk's interpretation, is that right? Well, it was Fisk saying what Hout said, and Hout didn't say it. Now, later on, is, is the body's, uh, interestingly enough, the fellow who bagged the body didn't see an exit wound. He was the guy that stood at the head of the body when they moved it over to bag it. He has to file a report if he comes in contact with blood. He did not file such a report because according to him, he saw no blood, period. So, you know, who's um, exactly right here? It's hard to say. Could I ask you one more sure. thing? Um, has n the report is in by STAR now, right, as far as Foster's death is concerned? Correct. You can order it from the government ha printing office. I put it online with some friends of mine. Has anyone confronted STAR with the report and asked you about discrepancies? Oh, well. has, has there been any public confrontation at all? Uh, none that I know of. Uh, I sent a copy of the article that's on diskette to his bosses and said, gee, guys, take a look at this. Uh, they received that letter Monday of this week. They will not be c getting back to me, but something might happen on it. Uh, the article that I wrote, the 22,000 word one on the STAR report, uh, is being shipped this week by Strategic Investment and will be serialized in Media Bypass. It'd be nice. And what we did with the Media Bypass article, by the way, is we sent it to STAR's office and gave them a chance to comment in advance of publication and apparently they did not. They chose not to. So to that extent, there's been sort of a confrontation with my magazine publisher guy sending a draft of the article that's on the diskette to Star's office saying, hey, we're going to print this. We'd like to give you the opportunity to comment in advance, and we'll put your comments in a sidebar or something. And apparently they may respond, but as far as I know, they have not yet. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, with the uh, small caliber injury wound in the neck, you know, it looks likely that that's the way he was killed or killed himself, and then it entering the head and not exiting. That would uh, be my guess. What puzzles me is why wouldn't they use that as the means of his committing suicide? He shot himself in the neck, well, up into the head yeah. with a small caliber. Uh, uh, one problem is, is that uh, the, I guess the way to, you know, what you're saying is why didn't they just go with what they had and claim Sure, rather than manufacturing yeah, all of these other things. The official death gun that they had to throw down since they didn't have one was the wrong caliber, number yeah. one. And then number two, uh, you'd have to trace the provenance of this 22, which would be a problem, too, if the family didn't own a 22. Mm -hmm. And I think what was going on is the silver six gun with a large barrel was supposed to be the official death weapon, and it just it didn't make it to the park on time. And there's a long analysis that I'd give you tonight about why I think that the, the confidential witness just bumbled on the body while they were still bringing it into the park and they didn't expect the body to be found until sunset when the park is closed and the park police do a drive-by. I think they thought they had several more hours to get the, get the death scene so-called constructed. And I think the confidential witness just bumbled into it and they went, oh my gosh, and then the Keystone Cop mm -hmm. stuff started. But that's kind of speculative well, it, on my it's part. It's still confusing in a way. Let's say that they... they uh, 
could discover that he had a 38 caliber weapon, uh, why wouldn't they still use the entry wound in the neck and just say, well, they were, they were mistaken. It was a larger caliber entry wound in the neck yeah. rather than manufacturing an additional one in the mouth, which would obviously backfire on them if anybody, you know, had noticed like they did the entry wound in, in the yeah. side of the I neck. Think, I think one of the things that, that is a problem is, is that, and, and people like me are often accused of like, oh, you're, you're postulating this elaborate conspiracy with everything coordinated and everything clicking off perfectly and everybody doing their bit mm -hmm. and some giant controlling intelligence coordinating this real time and planning it in advance. I don't think that happened. I think you're seeing some of the noise of a, of a, of a largely impromptu cover-up. Mm -hmm. For instance, let's just say, I mean, say the guy was murdered. Could have been somebody totally unconnected with the Clinton White House. What they would know, though, is that the Clinton White House would bust its buns to cover up the murder by somebody else for the Clinton White House's own purposes, namely, who's going around killing our people and why? So, you know, there's, sure. there's, there are loose yeah. ends in it, and, mm -hmm. and, and I wouldn't be up here tonight if there weren't any loose ends. Everything I gave you is a loose end that just didn't get tied up. Yeah, I have another comment, sure. or a question, really. Uh, I've never seen a photograph of that slope before, which looks pretty steep in the photograph. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, I haven't heard them bring up the aspect, it seems to me, if somebody were just even sitting there, let alone standing, and shoots himself, he's going to slide down that slope, oh, at yeah. least part way. Yeah, he was found lying on his back just ready for the coffin. Hair was combed, shirt was oh, neat, amazing. pants creased, yeah. the whole bit. Supposedly he shot himself while sitting on a root. The gun came out of his mouth from the recoil but stayed in his hand, magically flowed down to his side, and then he just lay down straight and neat, and his other hand, if it was on the gun too, magically yeah. fell down to his side. It, did, it doesn't comport with reality. Yeah. Hi, yes, I was wondering if you would uh, dare uh, speculate as to why he was killed? I can do a little bit of that. Did I die? I guess I, the, the, the tape's off. Uh, am I right? I can't. I think it's Mike's dead. Did I just turn it? You got me? Okay. Uh, I would be comfortable saying that I think what, what happened in general terms was he was resigning. The reason I say that is because he told his wife he was resigning. Your mic is off. Yeah, that's what I keep saying. Is, are we on? It, oh, okay. What happened was he told his wife he was resigning. He told his friends he was resigning. I think he was contemplating resigning. I think he was not depressed but under stress because, in general terms, I believe he was asked to head a little bit more toward the dark side than the gray side. I think he'd done some great things in his life for the administration. Uh, one concrete possibility was he was the man in charge of marshalling the assets for the Clinton's blind trust. One I think for Bill, one I think for Hillary, one I think for Chelsea. He knew about their financial affairs. If as the person in charge at the White House end of marshalling their assets to get them in the blind trust, he knew, for example, there were assets that were legally required to go in the blind trust that were not going in the blind trust, he's got to He's got a, uh, yeah, I tried that. He's got a huge ethical bind. So by and large, I think somebody within or without the administration put him in a position that was uncomfortable for him, and what he wanted to do was just no harm, no foul, hold separate, leave. Oh, I'm back. And then I think what happened is that the weekend before, what? The weekend before his death, he had a meeting uh, at Michael Cardozo's uh, with Webb Hubble. It was supposedly a social weekend. I think what was negotiated that weekend was the terms of his separation from the administration. And I think someone within or without the administration uh, or someone connected to the administration got a little nervous uh, that maybe Vince wouldn't follow the deal. One possibility, purely speculative, is that they sent a strong arm guy around to sort of shake him up a little bit, shove a gun in his face, and say, you better damn well keep your part of the bargain, Vince and maybe the gun discharged accidentally. I mean, that's a, we just don't know. I mean, you can go down a whole bunch of branches, no pun intended, like the severed branch, and I just don't know. Yeah, the, the Ambrose Evans Pritchard has that in his book about the Jerry Parks connection. He talked to Jerry Parks, according to Parks' widow, uh, when, right, and then when Vince was found dead, Jerry Parks told his widow, I'm a dead man, they're gonna get me, and he was killed gangland style about Six weeks later, I think. <laughs>